Hi everyone, it's Kev from Kiko here. So uh, today we're going to go through a run of the L2E system. Uh, a lot of you have seen this system out now in the marketplace, but lots and lots of questions are coming in. There's a lot of modularity to this system, so we just want to go through and explain that uh, piece by piece now. First things first, obviously light, it's nice and easy. Plug it in, 12 volt, and you've got your, uh, your light on there. So we won't go into too much detail about that. You also have, up in here, you have your laminated 6C's sheet. So this is a complete rundown. This is the how to do. You follow this step by step, you're gonna get a great repair. On the back, a couple of important things. It's two uh, sentences here. If a high amount of very small bubbles are visible in the glue, this indicates the glue is too warm when pulled. So if you're removing your spent glue and there's loads and loads of bubbles in there, um, you just need to drop that temperature down a touch more. Likewise, if the glue is breaking up or becoming brittle. Now this is only after you've pulled. If you have a substandard pull and you look at the glue immediately, if you leave the glue on for quite a while, um, then obviously it's gonna cool down a little bit more. So, but if it does become uh, brittle, a little bit of warmth over the top of the glue, uh, even to remove it from the panel is, is all that's needed. And squirt with the IPA and away it'll come. On the back here, we've got two QR codes. So we have one, the pull to paint process, and we have one of frequently asked questions. So scan those QR codes on your phone, tap the link, and that will give you loads and loads of really, really good information. So this is our extended height cabling. Now, why have we put this in the L2, uh, the L2E over the other systems? Um, it became apparent that a couple of times the beam was that made could bottom out um, on the, you know, if you're using the large expanse of the beam. So these are, these also come with the system. These are the shorter height legs. Okay. Now we do have an extended height lifter here as well on the saddle. So this is a lot longer than the uh, the usual one. Um, still has the functionality, the 360 degree, the articulating feet. If the bar's sitting like this and you maybe want to shorten this leg down, lengthen this one, all we need to do is pop this black rubber off the end, undo the locking nut on the top of the leg, and lift that leg off. Now we can repeat the process. So let's pop that back on and then pop that back on. Now we have one leg. Where this has come uh, useful, I've seen in, in the workshop, is where the smaller leg was, is, is sat on the, on the panel and the larger one is maybe on a wheel. So if you're going across uh, a rear quarter panel, um, it enables you to stagger that height as well. Or for the sake on um, some of the performance cars out there that have a particularly flared wheel arch or uh, wing fender, um, it enables you to get that extra height needed to lift off. Right, so we can bring all of these legs right the way in should we want to. We want to decrease our, our beam length and the saddle will actually move 300 and slide along the beam as well to enable you. It has this 360 degree rotational bracket at the bottom. So whatever way you're pulling your um, your tab track adapter, that will enable that to pull in exactly the direction you want to. And you can lock this and have it pulling at an angle should you wish. I've seen it a couple of times where people have said to me, well, I've been able to get, let's say this is my panel, I've been able to get my kidney shaped feet on the corner of a panel here, so it's nice and sturdy but these feet are sitting in the open panel and they're concerned that when you start putting tension on, that it's gonna start depressing dents into the panel. This is where the modularity comes in. Obviously on the caving junior, we have these style feet. So these little lifts snap off. Now a good way of getting these off, rather than trying to pull them, is just to twist and they'll pop out nice and easy. But what we were finding is people were saying, right, okay, we said about using these, but they were putting the foot, using one foot and putting it across, which is all good and well if you have the ability, but there's actually a lot more flexibility if you put the feet this way around. So that enables the feet to rotate and articulate. So if you're sitting on, on you know, above a body line, 
that enable this to follow either side of the body line. With using these feet as well, try and use these feet so we can push, where possible, a crown down. So as we're lifting up, putting tension on, these feet, if they're sat on a crown, they can actually start pushing the crown down. We're giving that dual action, giving that metal flow, which is uh, the great thing about this system. Very similar, see, the KB Junior. Again, it does have the extended height lift on it. You can see the length of this one. So you can pop these off and put the extended height legs on, should you wish. Mid lifter, this is the uh, Robo lifter. Great tool, 360 degree rotational body. Plenty of articulation on the kidney feet here as well. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about now is the modularity of how this fits in. Now you can see how the body's been used and a lot of the other tools have been the system, but this has so much potential and it's just a case of swapping out. So within the system, you have two of the pass-through adapters as well. So this is a smaller pass-through adapter just see this is about double the size all right so these are going to add on to make our crease killer so you may have seen the crease kill uh, system before it will utilize the foot plates from the k-beam junior or they just happen to be on that at the moment so these here if you have a look they're actually offset so we have one at 12 and a half uh, millimeter uh, space and one at 25 millimeter. So what that means, if you can see here, it's say 12 and a half, 25. If you have the two 25s facing each other, the gap down the middle, your effective pulling surface is gonna be 25 mil. Spin it around, it's now gonna be 12 and a half mil. So what we can do, we could set this up in this way, utilizing the small pass-through adapter. So if I was working on, say, a, a, a tight aluminium, Paul Schreiber would say, he's got very, very tough aluminium, um, and I grab a tab this size, I pop that in there, that's you know, it's quite a big ask for Porsche aluminium for that to, for that to pull. I'm not saying it won't, but sometimes if the, if the dent's real gnarly, um, you, you might overpower. So what we can do is grab one of our dead center uh, crease tabs, we have the same effective pulling surface as seven mil. We have the thin neck, touch thicker on this one that is on the, uh, on the dead center tab here, but that will enable us to slide down the middle here. Okay, now because we're point loading this, these tabs all have a certain amount of flex to them. So once they're, once they're warm, and as, as I start pulling that, you can see the middle's flexing. Okay, so although we've glued the whole surface area, we're actually only focusing our pull on one section of this tab. So we're going to get all the added benefit of this um, adhesion, but we're only going to pull that very, very center. So we'll still only have an effective pulling space of what this gives us, but we've got loads more adhesion. So it's a really good way of improving uh, your pull on some of those heavier aluminium panels. So pop these off. Now we want to put this tab on so we can grab a little bit more of this. So again, increasing the area that we're gonna pull. So the way I do it, I just push up slightly on this spring and then just undo the adjustment knob at the top, undo it all the way. Remove the lifter off and then we can put this one on. So pop that on the spring and then just screw that in. Okay, so now we can pop these back on and we now have a longer lifting uh, adapter for our dead center tab. But we're still only utilizing the one mini lifter. So the real cruise guy, you've seen it, it has two mini lifters end to end. This is where the Recon Robo comes in. So we can pop the feet off this Unscrew the Recon Robo to speed things up. I've actually got one free done here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the other pass-through adapter on, nice and quick. So that's gonna screw on to where the C-clamp on the Recon Robo would be. Now we have 
uh, two Robo lifters, which then enable us to clip on either end, thus making our crease killer system. Okay, so we can put any of our large tabs through and pull quite nicely there. So anyone that's used these will know just how powerful. These are great on, on van doors. Any, any dent that's real deep um, that you want to get to that primary. So the way these tabs pull is the neck is really, really important part. So the thicker the neck, obviously the wider the pull. It's not always down to the face, it's down to the neck and how they're pulled as well. So just a one simple mini lifter has been able to turn into multiple adjustments. So whilst we're on there, we might as well uh, we speak about this uh, Recon Robo at the same time. So in the old L2 system, the C-clamp was hung down the bottom here, and a lot of people didn't really know what it was for. Um, some people think, yeah, it's just a basic edge tool. Uh, there's a little bit more to it than that. So I'll run through that now with you. So again, same thing, if we want to remove this or install it, just lift up slightly, unscrew the tension knob, and that will drop away. We can put all our different feet on, as we've just done with the other lifters. But how this works, yes, it is for panel edges. Okay, so we can, we can remove this tip and we can screw any of the tips on that are with the system. So if we're working on a body line, we could screw this one on. Okay, and then we can work up to that. But the most important thing about this is front wings or fenders. We're all careful, we don't want to blow out uh, a front wing or fender over doing a repair. So if we have something with a, a particularly sizable um, crown, so the, the wing's taken, a, taken a, a piece of damage, we've got a body line in it and each restoring, obviously it's a, it's a hard um, area to work, especially if it's uh, aluminum or aluminium. Um, and you're working at the front of the wing and there may be a lot of flex in that in that wing. As we start repairing it, we run a high risk of blowing that arch line out. So what this does, this enables us to support the wing edge. The panel's gonna sit in like this, okay? So this foot is gonna sit, sit right on the wing edge. This foot can sit on the crown itself Okay, now we can, if we, if we need to, pop any one of the larger feet on there. This tip we're going to adjust so it sits on the body line. Okay, so like that. So now that's all sat in. So I've got this foot here on the crown, this foot here on the wing edge, and this tip on the body line. And now I'm going to start my pull. So what's happening with that, again it's that that wonderful dual action that we use, the double action of the Kiko system. As we're pushing up with this, or pulling up with this tip, this foot is pushing down, so it's pushing the crown in. So it's allowing that metal to come back and creating metal flow, allowing the metal that's being pushed down to then be pushed out into the, um, into the body line we're trying to restore. But the whole time we're doing that, this bottom foot is sat on the arch edge and it's not allowing that arch edge to blow. We can, once we've got it gripped, you can manipulate the arch. If the arch line needs re restoring slightly, we can move that around to get that restoration in there and then release. But literally what we can do is we can sit on a body line, work out and then just literally work around restoring that body line. So a really, really effective tool for wing edges. So we've spoken about how the precision plate crease feet can uh, help us out with, with the two roadway lifters, uh, set up the crease kill. We also have the single foot as well. So again, precision plate, this will enable us to click onto here. What it's now gonna do is gonna effectively only pull this space here. So we've got any of our smaller tabs, our dead center tabs, they just fit it. So if we're working up on a sail panel, um, C post, something like that, where there's a lot of flexibility, what this is gonna enable us to do is pull 
the tab while supporting the surrounding area. So exactly the same as what we're doing with the preskill feet. We're holding all the surrounding metal down whilst we're concentrating our pull on the, the effective pulling surface. You know, we're, we're getting the maximum we can out of these tabs by holding all the surrounding metal down whilst we just pull the one area. This is identical thing with this precision plate. Okay, so we're just gonna get a very, very precise pull in there. The K bar itself, very simple, easy to use tool. Obviously we have the sliding saddle here, so maybe just to put extra tension on where we want. The foot, we just want that on a stable surface, so on a panel edge, on a wheel, or something like that. Um, any tough part of the car. Um, and then we can obviously pull up. Uh, we'll go on a little bit more when we get down into the, uh, the base of the system about how the tap tracks actually integrate with each one of these tools. So now we have our two hammers. So we have our body hammer and we have our finessing hammer. Okay, so quite a difference in weight. Everything again is interchangeable. So we can take these off, we can put another tip on there should we wish. The reason these tips will push together is to enable us to work hammer on top of hammer. So if you've got um, a line you're, or draw a crown you're trying to tap down, obviously to try and tap down single-handedly takes a bit of, uh, a bit of uh, practice, whereas we can lay one hammer down strike the top with the other hammer. These tips, they do have protected faces. We can remove these protected faces off. As you can see here, it has a highly polished, slightly convex tip. It's a double convex, so it's gonna get that sweet spot right in the middle. So it can be used for slapping, for knocking down crowns, or you say you can pop your, your rubber cap on, you can just take a little bit more of that crown down with you. Likewise, has a rubber cap on this one. This one isn't polished. Um, it's just a more, so it's more of a case of um, if you like that metal to, to metal finish. This puck over here, a lot of people are saying, well, what's this for? Knocking down is very difficult to start out with. So obviously if you're knocking down with a small surface like this, we're trying to make these two surfaces together, it's gonna be quite difficult. So being able to spin around, now you can remove both of these tips and now we can use that more of a, a puck handle. So this, tip here, it does have a lock nut on here. So what we can do, we can look to lock the tip in the direction that we're trying to tap down. So I'm gonna say if I wanna go at a diagonal, I can actually lock the tip diagonally to enable me to get in. So if I'm working round, we we'll use the, the smaller KVM Junior starters. If I've got this set up, sit in my tab and I've got my crown round here, obviously getting this hammer in to be effective is gonna be very, very difficult. So what we've done here with this modular knockdown, you may have some of these might be in blue and uh, uh, aluminium, and this one is a steel version. But what we can do, these all break down into single sections. Okay, so what we can actually do is remove our tip here. Screw modular knockdown in, the tip on the end. Okay, now when we come in, we can actually work around this way for you so you can see. So I can actually lay that in nice and close to, I can tap cleanly without anything being in the way with no obstruction. Okay, so I can get a good strike on the top there. Moving on, we've got the Crown slappers, so these work in conjunction with our hammers. So two types of material, we have a slightly stiffer version, and we have one that's particularly bendable. Both of these will hold, if they've if a little bit of heat on them, they will hold their shape. Likewise here. All right. What this is gonna enable us to do is to go straight. We're always trying to protect the OE surface. Okay, so whatever our um, painted surfaces, we're trying to protect that as best as we can. Now, the issue becomes, we'll say, well, okay, why are we protecting it? Because we're gonna be painting the vehicle. Um, 
not always and also as soon as we start getting scuffs and chips and other bits in, in that painted surface uh, you start to get blinded by information and it becomes very very difficult to decipher what's high and what's low. So these are going to respect that OE surface. So what we can do, we can lay these on a panel and, and then we can just strike the panel. This is going to absorb, this red one in particular, is going to absorb some of the impact. So rather than having a, a kind of a sharp V impact, which is what these tips will generally deliver, um, you're going to turn that V into a U. Now we talk about V's and U's a lot in training. Anytime we have a V, we have strength. So if we have a V, as soon as you push up on the side, it's going to push highs up and, and vice versa and get the other way around. If we can have a U, it enables flow. So it's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to neaten that area. So rather than going on straight on hammer to hammer, creating that hammer rash, place a slapper in there, and it's just gonna take that crown down a lot, lot simpler. The blue one, um, I like to use on panel edges. So if I'm uh, trying to beat up a panel edge, uh, I've got one that's particularly bent over, uh, to protect that sealer uh, on the inside of the, of the panel edge, I can place that in between and then strike and I can hit that nice and hard with no fear of damaging um, that panel edge. These can also be used um, if you've got, like well, I say, you're using a mini lifter and one of our dead center tabs, we want to make sure that when we're pulling a dead center tab, we're pulling perpendicular, we're pulling straight, especially on the ice tabs, because if there's any type of um, pull to the, to the side, we run the risk of snapping the neck uh, or just popping the tab off the panel. For argument's sake, we've got a rolled roof edge. We pop the mini lifter in and you can see the mini lifter, the, the tab is sitting quite awkward with it. What we can actually do is bring one of these in under the foot just to square that up a touch. So another good use for them. Multiple uses, you know, wherever, wherever you see fit, they're a great, uh, a great tool. So next tool is our black swan. This is an often overlooked tool this is. First things first, your hand is covering most of the detail you're trying to strike. Secondly, put it on there. As we go to strike, we generally set the tool up. When we strike, the tool gets angled down. So as we strike, it skips off. Also, if we're working on a roof or a side panel, bedside, something like that, of a van, there's a lot of reverberation, a lot of bounce within that, uh, within that panel. So this is where this tool comes in. We can pop the cap off. This is just to protect the brass under here. You could leave that on if you wanted, but I find there's a little air pocket in the top here, so I prefer to straight, straight onto the brass. So what we can do now is we can set the height of our tap down right, to exactly where we want. And using this little thumb wheel here, we can lock that in. I can now have my hand over here. I know I'm perfectly straight onto my panel. So I can sit and I can bend, I can tap. So this is able to bounce, should I wish, or if I'm working on that, that roof or that side panel where I have that reverberation, I can actually tote the tool up. So I can just put a bit of weight on the arm of the tool to take that bounce out. Okay, so I can either sit here, now and then bounce, or choke it up. But it gets my hand clear of the, uh, of the knockdown. So a really, really good, but often overlooked tool. We go down to our slide hammers now. So two slide hammers, the mini slide hammer here, and then the larger slide hammer. Now, blue doesn't like to be shocked. So if I've got a nice sizable tab on the panel, central aluminium tab, you can look and go, okay, well, where's the adapters for these? Any of these tap track adapters will actually fit in, screw down. Okay, so you can use that now. 
There's little plastic washers on here, just make sure the washer is to the head of the bolt so that it sits inside the uh, adapter. Okay, so if I'm sitting there now, this is a very aggressive tool, so wind this all the way down. I want to use this to do my glue pull. I've got a fairly I've got a heavy metal to metal contact. This is going to create a shock on the tab, okay, which the glue doesn't necessarily like. The glue is all about flexibility, it wants to, wants to flex. So what we want to do is unwind this tension spring at the top. So you can unwind it as much or as little as you like. But you can see now we're, we're taking that metal snap out. I have to really hit it hard in order to get that snap. So what that's going to enable to do, it's going to enable to us to pull this tab nicely rather than snapping it off the panel. I'd say it is an aggressive tool, but used correctly, um, it's a very, very good tool, very powerful tool. You just haven't got to be whacking everything. With the other tools we have in the system, um, we're always looking for a linear pulling, but sometimes you do need that little shock and that's where this comes in. So if I move down to these tabs, a little five mil dead center, this is our ice tab, it's a polycarbonate. Um, and I put this tab on a panel, put this slide hammer on and try to whack it. Well, it's like me giving you uh, a small panel pin and a sledgehammer. The, the, the two don't, they're not compatible, they don't go together. Yes, you probably could do something with it, but the chances are you're gonna break something. So this mini slide hammer, it's a very, very light slide hammer, and it's designed specifically for our dead center taps. It's just enough weight in there, so we're not gonna put excessive pressure into our tab, snapping the necks or, or creating damage on there, or overwhelming the glue. So these are matched very much to our dead center tabs. This new system is called the L2E, the E standing for efficiency. So we're trying to get the most efficient way for a technician to work. Now, obviously, every time you pick the glue gun up, you've got to try and find somewhere for it to put it down so it's not going to burn anyone or melt anything. It's no good. We need to just be able to drop that immediately into where it goes. We have a holder here for our thermometer. We have a holder for our heat gun. And then we have two tubs here. We can keep, I keep spent glue in one and I keep my uh, new glue sticks as I come out. I take a packet of 10, I'll put the 10 glue sticks in there and any of my uh, waste glue I put in there before I throw it into the bin. So this can be fitted either end of the tool cart. So if you're left or right handed, obviously when you build the cart, you just want to make sure your handles and casters are on the opposite end if you want to use a Z channel up that end. Glue gun, generally they're set right down to 140 degrees, which is going to be, you might get molten glue out the end, but that's about it. Um, so we want to make sure that's adjusted, so it's pushing around towards the 200 mark. A thermometer, a very, very key part of the, uh, the GPR process. We need to measure temperatures, panel temperatures, glue temperatures. There's a little laser on there, so we see exactly where we're pointing. Just make sure, obviously, we're not measuring things from you know, a meter away, six foot, whatever. You want to be somewhere in a sort of 12 inches, 300 mil range. Um, and then we have an adjustment there where we can turn from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Then we've got a heat gun. So this is a dual temperature heat gun, or dual fan heat gun. Um, so it has a high and a low. So low sometimes if you just want a nice breath of warmth going over the panel if it's a particularly cold day or if you want to spot heat, obviously you can put it on high. Why do we use a heat gun over a, uh, a, a torch? Uh, me personally, a couple of reasons. First of all, this, this is a, an alcohol-based product. Um, alcohol burn, burns clear, so if you're spraying this on a panel and it hasn't fully evaporated, and you grab your map gas torch, you put it on the panel, you ignite it, next thing you've got a fire on your hands. In a body shop, it's really not a good idea to be having naked flames. The other thing as well, there is um, a lot of people say, well, actually, when I, when I use my map gas, I can see the moisture dissipate from the panel surface. 
Um, in actual fact, what you're seeing is the moisture from the propane itself evaporating on the panel surface. So in that gas is, it relies on a lot on propane. Within the propane, there is water. So the moisture you see dissipating out from there is the moisture from your map gas as opposed to the moisture from your, your panel surface. So using a heat gun, getting that panel temperature to 50 degrees uh, before we start. Uh, the Fahrenheit uh, number is on the, uh, on the uh, 6C sheet as well. So make sure we get to our temperature, then we know there's no moisture present. So just try and steer clear just for safety's sake um, and stick with the heat gun. We have our two glues. So we have a flexible glue, and we have the tab well with the grey glue. So when would I use both of those? 90% of what you're going to come across, you're going to want probably actually higher than that. This flex glue will take you all the way through from rough out all the way through to final finish. So why do we have two glues within the system? Well, this is uh, for fast or simple. If I'm, if I'm working on some of the smaller tabs down here, the setup time on this glue is, is a lot quicker. And also it just pushes, this tops out around a 30 degree Celsius mark. Um, you'd have to start trying to cool it down, um, whereas this will push into the sort of 30, 34, and it becomes very effective still. So obviously this is systems have been sold worldwide, so we need to make sure we've got everyone covered. You can force cool the glues. Um, would we recommend it wherever possible? Try and let the glues cool down together um, with the tab and the panel surface. Um, if you need to force cool some compressed air uh, or a wet rag, just draped over the top of the panel is enough to just cool that panel down. You know, if you get up into the temperatures like we had last year, 40 odd degrees, um, that's, a, that's something you can do. But for the most part, so this is going to be for your fast, in fact it says there, fast, small and simple damage. The working window on the flex glue is huge. As long as you keep that glue at a certain temperature, um, which again is in your 60s process, uh, this will, will sit. You can actually lay a tab on, you can reheat the tab again with your, uh, with your heat gun. So if you feel you're losing a little bit of heat in there, just reactivate the glue and then it will be good for pulling again. So just a really, really good, effective glue.